So then guys, in front of me right now, I have my M2 Ultra Max Studio and I also have the M3 Ultra Max Studio. And today I want to tell you something different here. I'm gonna flip this on its head. I'm gonna tell you the reasons why I'm keeping my M2 Ultra Max Studio and why you should too. And also, why did I buy the M3 Ultra? You know, not just to make money off you guys and make videos about it, because if you check out my channel, I only made one video. But, you know, I'm gonna tell you the reason why I am honestly sticking with the M2 Ultra, because there's some very, very good reasons for it. So, first of all, let's go over then the major differences that we have right here between both of these models. Now, my Mac Studio, my M2 Ultra, my old faithful, what I bought back in 2022, actually has inside of it a 24 core CPU and also the 76 core GPU. And in fact, I also bought the baseline version of that. So I actually just got 64 gigabytes of RAM inside of this, the one terabyte drive inside of this too. But what I've essentially done when I got this M3 Ultra, I expect it to be something very similar. So I've actually got the 96 gigabytes of RAM in here. I've got the one terabyte hard drive. So I've got the 32 core CPU and also I've got the 80 core GPU too. And to be deadly honest, the reason why I bought this, as a reviewer, I normally, like any other kind of YouTuber reviewers out there, just jump on it straight away to buy it, because obviously we have to get to it, make sure we don't miss out on any dates or anything like that when it arrives. But the second I ordered it, I knew for a fact, after reading information on Apple's website, that maybe this is going to be a bit of a regret straight away. So then guys, just quickly, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Kinster. Now, have you ever been in that situation where you wanted to build your own website, but then you have to worry about all the web hosting and all the bits and pieces that go along with that, and it gets really complicated? Well, that's where Kinster comes along and will help you out. So if you don't have a clue about web hosting or anything like this, those guys there are there to help you out, especially that they're available 24-7 to get you sorted and up and running with your web hosting. And the cool thing is, you're not actually talking to AI or chatbots. We're talking real human beings available 365 days a year to help you out with your website. Their web hosting, like it says on their website, is managed hosting for WordPress. Their web hosting gives you everything that you need. So super fast speeds that will wow your visitors a super easy dashboard to get along with, and top-notch security that never sleeps. For me, having your website run super quick is definitely an essential. No one wants to wait around for a page to load, and Kinsta.com gives you that. And not only this too, like I said, there's top-notch security also involved to stop your page being hacked and changed and things like this. And then the best thing I think what Kinsta.com provides is that support from real human beings 24-7, 365 days a year, where you can get help for with your web host if you did come across any problems, but I doubt that'd be the case because the dashboard is so easy to use. And with that, I would say switch all your hosting over to Kinster because not only all these features I spoke about today, they're also offering you guys a one month free trial and also a 30 day guarantee to make sure that you get everything set up and get the support that you need for your web hosting. So what are you waiting for? Check out all the information that's in the description of this video and switch over to kinster.com. And with that, let's go back to the main video. Because as you can see right here, for example, it didn't look that much different in kind of speed compared to the M2 Ultra. Now, my M2 Ultra, I mainly use it for three different things. So one thing I do is I do a bit of coding, not too much, I'm not the best, I'm not a good developer. Um, the other thing is what I do is I also do, say, 3D models and renders. So you might have seen lots of my renders on my channel when I do my news videos, you know, the iPhone 17s, the MacBooks, you get the idea. All of those sort of images, they're made from this device right here, what you're seeing here right now. What is really, really awesome, I love doing that. And then something else that you might have seen me do is obviously I love to also print off models too. I love to do 3D printing. It's something else what I use my machine for to make models just like the iPhone 17 Air and the iPhone 17 Pro Max. And then finally, probably the, the thing what I use it most for 
is for video editing. So like this video right now, it's been recorded. After it's done, I'm gonna hook up this M2 Ultra back up to my screens and everything, and I'm gonna make videos on it all over again. But then the big question is, why did I decide to get the M3 Ultra? Well, like I explained already, I just jumped in on there and I just thought that, you know, Apple would have probably specced up the M3 Ultra to be super impressive. And if we just have a look here at some charts to show you here, so starting out with Geekbench, for example, comparing M2 Ultra to M3 Ultra and M4 Max, now, to me, these results are very close. Just look at this. Look, even the single core performance. Yes, the M3 Ultra is a little bit ahead here, but just even looking at the multi-core performance, you know, we've got 21,988, almost 22,000, and we've also got 28,000 in multi-core performance. There's just not a lot in it here whatsoever. It is quite disappointing to see this. I was expecting even more, but say even if we move over to say Geekbench Metal graphics scores. Just look here. This is the 76 core setup M2 Ultra and the 80 core M3 Ultra. And look, 234,000 to 251,000. There's nothing in it really. There is obviously some improvement, but you know, you can see what I mean now that the M2 Ultra is still absolutely fantastic. It is no way a slow machine compared to the M3 Ultra in any way. And then even if we say looked at 3D Mark still Nomad Light. You know, the average frames per second I was getting with the 76 core version was 129, whereas we were getting 156 frames per second. That's four more cores, newer cores too. That is an improvement, I am gonna say that, but it's not a huge, huge big difference. If there was one place where there was a little bit of a difference, I would say that was using LM Studio. I did a deep sync QN7B, did a 1000 word story test, you know, 5000 tokens. And yeah, you can see here, it could do uh, 58 tokens per second here with the M2 Ultra. Whereas with the M3 Ultra, obviously did 84 tokens uh, per second. So obviously that is a bit more of improvement, but it's not a huge amount when you actually think about it. And it didn't stop there either of how close these two machines were. And you know, let me show you say video editing. The main thing I would actually use this Mac Studio for, I actually work with Hevec kind of files here. And obviously I do 10 bit videos is what quite a lot of you guys out there do too. And have a look at the export speeds here. So we can see here my 10 minute video. Well, it took 85 seconds to complete this export on the M2 Ultra, um, you know, there. And then the M3 Ultra, well, it took 76 seconds. And obviously these are the different sort of CPU core versions. Remember, both of these have the four media decoders and, you know, and all of those sort of bits and pieces in it. They've got these media engines in there. So both of them are very, very similar. But obviously, again, as a video editor, there's not much in it here we're talking nine seconds it's hardly anything and it's the same thing as well i also did something for say rendering where i got that same 10 minute video and i made it to 25 percent speed made it you know four times longer to convert all of that it took the m2 ultra 42 seconds and it took the m3 ultra 39 seconds three seconds difference that's how much faster the m3 ultra just three seconds it was not a lot so what I would say with that, one of the big reasons why I got an M2 Ultra at the time was because of those sort of encoders and decoders inside of it. There's actually four inside of it, the media kind of engines, there's four, compared to say like the M4 Max only has two, the M4 Pro will actually only has one, and the M4 only has one as well. This actually has four, and actually Apple haven't really upgraded these or touched these ever since the M2 sort of series. Now, the M1s did have them as well, but the M2 pushed it a little bit more. It actually helped out with Hevec and things like this, that actually Apple could put this into this. So that's why I went for the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. But that media engines and decoders and decoders, you know, everything like that, they are the exact same ones what's inside this M3 Ultra right here. Now, obviously the GPU does help out a little bit, but as you saw from the score here, not enough. It's just not worth it for me to have an M3 Ultra Mac Studio whatsoever. 
And the crazy thing is now, is that even though the M3 Ultra is $4,000, the M4 Max, you know, we've seen this in loads of other YouTubers and reviewers, it can outpace the M2 Ultra, but obviously the one area it can't outpace it is obviously to do with saying video exporting and also video importing, what's a big part of what I do. So what I would be saying right now is that there's some great deals out there on the M2 Ultra. If you can buy this second hand and obviously you might not get a warranty on some places, but some places you will. This is definitely still a great buy. And in fact, you can actually pick this up for near the price of the M4 Max. Now, I'll say it again, obviously in CPU and GPU, it's gonna be slower a little bit, the M2 Ultra, than say the M4 Max. But for video editing, if it's like me, the key reason, and I'd also probably say music editing too, because it'll help out there, the M2 Ultra is definitely a more solid buy to actually get this than an M3 Ultra, than also the M4 Max. But what I would be saying is the M4 Max is a fantastic deal if you're going to be mixing everything up. So, for example, if you are going to be like saying what I do, where I do my actual sort of bit of coding, my 3D models, and also I do my video editing, if I could split that into 33%, 33%, 33% sort of split, then I probably would have been opting for an M4 Max right now. But what I would be saying, if you are more of a media person with video editing, and also to do with say that like music editing, M2 Ultra all the way, baby. I wouldn't be getting an M4 Max personally. I'd be getting that because that will help out so much, especially if also if you're working with, like with RAW and things like this, you know, files like that. Those four encoders and decoders are big time, a big, big help inside of it. And really guys, I think you can understand now why the M3 Ultra for me it's just a big disappointment, I'm gonna say that. Maybe the M4 Ultra was gonna be better. Maybe, you know, the M4 Ultra, or even let's say the M5 Ultra, because we've been hearing that the M4 Ultra might be ditched altogether. They might put more media encoders and decoders inside of it, because at the end of the day, that's what Apple have been doing. They've been adding more cores in. I would love them to do that. If this had say six inside of them instead of four, and then also at the same time, we've gone up to say M5 Ultra, oh yeah, I'd be upgrading to this. But at the moment where it stands, you can see why I'm gonna be sticking with my M2 Ultra. And what I'm gonna give as my advice here is that obviously M4 Max, if you're gonna be mixing up your variety, but if you are just sticking with media editing, like in Premiere, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci, you get the idea, and also like Logic Pro and all of these sort of things to do with actual music, media files, M2 Ultra is definitely a better option for you out there. And with that then guys, I'm gonna package this up and yeah, I am going to send it back to Apple. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that the M2 Ultra is still a great buy over the M3 Ultra for video editing and things like this? Or do you think the M4 Max is probably a better buy than the M2 Ultra for your needs? Well, let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you wanna hear the latest Apple news and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care, bye-bye.